Good day, and today we're going to have a quick video about limericks. When we start looking at poetry for its sense of humor, it can arise from a number of sources. Sometimes the wording can be merely surprising, something that the reader or the listener did not expect. Sometimes you can use exaggeration, something that the reader would expect to be one way, but then it is expressed in a different manner. And you can also bring together unrelated things using other figures of speech, such as similes, metaphors. Figures of speech might bring together those unrelated things and cause humor. Now, most poems are going to have two things in common, whether they're funny or not, and that is going to be rhythm and rhyme. Usually in humorous rhyme, <coughs> humorous rhymes, uh, excuse me, humorous poems, you're going to have rhythm and rhyme. Now, when you look at more spirited language that makes humorous situations even more humorous, a lot of times we see that rhythm and rhyme being used. For example, check out The Porcupine by Ogden Nash. Any hound a porcupine nudges can't be blamed for harboring grudges. I know one hound that laughed all winter at a porcupine that sat on a splinter. Now, if you take away the rhythm and rhyme from this poem, the humor seems to vanish. Any hound that touches a porcupine can't be blamed for holding a grudge. I know one hound that laughed all winter long at a porcupine that sat on a piece of wood. Now, when we look specifically at limericks, it's a poem of five lines. Now, the first, second, and fifth lines have three rhythmic beats and they rhyme with one another. The third and fourth lines have two rhythmic beats, and those two lines rhyme with one another. Now, limericks should be lighthearted, humorous poems. Let's take a look at some examples of limericks before you try to write one. There once was a man with no hair. He gave everyone quite a scare. He got some Rogaine throughout a main and now he resembles a bear. How about a limerick about a bee? I wish that my room had a floor. I don't care so much for a door. But this walking around without touching the ground is getting to be quite a bore. And another limerick about a mouse. There once was a very small mouse who lived in a very small house. The ocean's spray washed it away. All that was left was her blouse. So let's take a look at a limerick that we are going to be thinking, well, how can I create one of my own? Well, here's one that will be similar to your own. There once was a man from Beijing all his life, he hoped to be king. So he put on a crown, which quickly fell down, that small, silly man from Beijing. Again, remember, limericks are humorous. They should be lighthearted, so there shouldn't be any unhappiness. There shouldn't be any terrible or, or violent endings. They should have some lighthearted behavior. It can be silly. It can be pretty. It has to be lighthearted, almost humorous. And notice once again lines one, two, and five rhyme at the end. Lines three and four also rhyme at the end. And lines one, two, and five have three rhythmic beats. And lines three and four have two rhythmic beats. And so we're going to write one very similar to this one. So here's where I'm going to ask you to find your own piece of paper and then fill in the blanks and create your own limerick. So open a Google Docs or find a piece of paper and start filling in your own blanks. There once was a blank from blank. All the while they hoped blank. So they and that blank from blank. Now remember, lines 1, 2, and 5 should rhyme at the end, and lines 3 and 4 should rhyme at the end. 
So why don't you pause this video and take a look, or if you'd like to look at other uh, limericks, go back once again to the previous parts of this video, check out how they're written. Just remember, for a limerick, you have to have rhymes at the ends of lines one, two, and five, and lines three and four should rhyme. Your rhythms, you should have three major rhythmic beats in lines one, two, and five, and lines three and four should only have two. Lines three and four should be shorter than the other three lines of the limerick. Thank you so much for stopping by to learn just a little bit more about limericks and about poetry. If you'd like to learn more about different types of poetry, go back to my Learning Language Arts channel and check out my section, my, my channel list on poetry. If there's other poems you'd like me to cre create a fill in the blank and teach you how to write, please leave a comment down below. Let me know what other poems we can write. And as always, I appreciate it if you subscribed. Take care.